rejecting is more powerful and potent than any other form of administration. The power and potency of injecting makes the drug take on a whole new characteristic to the point it is barely seems like the same drug. Snorting cocaine, meth, or heroin is as similar to shooting it as smoking pot is to dropping acid. Injecting a drug is much more than a higher potency version of the same drug. It is an entirely different drug experience with new qualities. It cannot be described in terms that are related like happy times a thousand or intense pleasure. We simply do not have adjectives or a long enough list of qualifiers that fit the category of the amount of feeling data we experience watching and flooding through the mind and brain through IV drug use. It is beyond the category of happy or pleasure. Quite simply, it is a total immersion into a powerful rush. Injecting a drug delivers undiluted quantity of the drug directly into the bloodstream, which travels unfiltered by lungs like smoking or kidneys like drinking. The potency of a drug is preserved by IV administration, which is why a hospital administers a needed drug this way. You don't take a handful of anesthetic pills before surgery. You are given anesthetic through IV. The speed of delivery is powerful. Your blood is traveling through approximately 100,000 kilometers, 60,000 miles of veins and arteries and can do it in about 60 to 90 seconds. An injection in the arm can reach the brain in about five seconds. The moment it goes past the blood-brain barrier, it is absorbed and experienced all at once. There is nothing gradual about the IV method. It is felt within seconds and in its entirety. The mechanics of injecting are the same for heroin, meth, coke, or drugs in a hospital, or any IV administration. The only difference is that most tar heroin, tar is cheap and cut, the majority of street bought heroin, is cooked first to liquefy and to reduce cut, detailed in the heroin section. Diabetic syringes are commonly used and 20 to 60 cc's of water is injected into a spoon along with the drug. The solution is mixed to dissolve the salt into the water simply by stirring it, usually with the end of the orange cap from the syringe. Once the dope is dissolved into the water, a small pinky sized cotton ball, a torn piece of a cigarette filter usually, is dropped into the spoon to soak up the solution. This keeps the pool of liquefied solution from floating around the spoon. The needle tip is placed into the cotton and the plunger is pulled back to drop the solution into the chamber of the syringe. The chamber is tapped to settle the air bubbles and the plunger is slowly depressed to push it to the point of contact with the solution, squeezing any fragments of air out through the tip. This myth that an air bubble can cause some sort of embolism is mostly just that, a myth. A large bubble, especially injected directly into a small vein or capillary, could indeed cause death or the capillary to burst, but injectors are not using capillaries, they're using veins. IV users have a lot more to worry about than this though. A vein is selected, usually one in the arm that's large and easy to puncture. Typically a tourniquet, rubber strap or belt is wrapped around the bicep and the muscle is flexed to work up the blood pressure in the vein to make it protrude. The needle is inserted with ease and smoothness, but with quickness. Puncture would be the wrong term as the vein is more penetrated than punctured. Once the vein is penetrated, a small amount of blood will enter the needle and travel up to appear in the chamber. Usually you have to pull the plunger back a tiny bit to allow the blood to flow into the chamber to be certain you've entered the vein. This is called registering. The moment the rig registers, it's bombs away. The plunger goes down and the drug is injected into the bloodstream. Tracks are the blemishes left from the needle penetration. To avoid detection, IV users may use less obvious sites for injection, such as veins in the neck or ankles. And yes, a guy I know did indeed shoot into his penis once, in case you were wondering. Only an experienced IV user has the <clears throat> only an experienced IV -er has the dexterity to inject into a small awkward vein in a foot, ankle, or neck. Within about three seconds, the drug is tasted in your breath, and it causes a little cough as it goes through your lung capillaries and veins. This is its final step before entering the brain. This taste is much more pronounced with cocaine, somewhat pronounced with meth, and much less with heroin. The rush comes fast and beautiful. Depending on the hit, small and smart or thick and heavy, you will feel wonderful and ecstatic and smile ear to ear. With meth, you will shut your eyes tight and clench your jaw and fist as you ride out the roller coaster rush flooding through your body and head. With heroin, your eyes will close as you slip into a quasi-conscious state of peaceful numbness. Diabetic syringes can be bought at any pharmacy with a prescription and most drug abusers know at least one diabetic to get access to prescription for syringes. 
in an effort to make syringes more available to the drug addict community and reduce AIDS and other blood transmitted diseases. Many communities no longer require prescriptions. Needle exchange programs and non-prescription policies have done a lot of good in reducing the spread of these diseases to everyone. Needle penetrations, along with the toxicity of the administered drugs, erode the integrity of vein walls. Eventually, many long-term users cannot inject because the frailty of their veins will no longer register due to the decaying vein walls and low blood flow. Many IV users turn to using small veins in their feet, neck, or hands once the veins in the crook of their arm are no longer viable. If it sounds scary, it is. It is disgusting and every IV user has powerful denial mechanisms that mentally protect the addict from the harsh realization of his or her reality each and every time he or she injects. Each and every one of the thousand times I injected drugs, I was acutely conscious of the morbidity of the action experienced emotional trauma. It was not something you voice or acknowledge to yourself or other nearby addicts and I have no proof others felt the same way as my associates seemed indifferent to it. While nearly any narcotic can be injected, heroin and meth are the two leaders in this category.